Hi, welcome to AmoSmith.com. Today we're going to talk about primers, what you need to know. And primers come in a variety of sizes and by quite a few different manufacturers. We're going to cover just some of them, and this is just the basics. And what you need to do is go off the load data that you have. Because some cartridges require a magnum primer where others do not. When it comes to selecting our primers, what we want to do is pick the primer for the job. Now here we see the Federal Gold Medal Match GM215M Large Rifle Magnum Primer and this is a match primer for Magnum Rifle cartridges. It's usually not used in anything such as a 308 or 30 out 6 but once you get up to like the 300 Winchester Magnum, the 300 Weatherby Magnum, the 338 Lapua Magnum, or any of the larger Magnums that take the Large Rifle Primer, this is the way to go for accuracy. The big difference between match primers bench rest primers and standard primers is the type of ignition that it gives. These give a very uniform ignition and it helps to decrease velocity variations at, at the muzzle. The number 35 primer from CCI is for the 50 caliber BMG and it also will fit the 20 millimeter. These primers can be confused when ordering online for the number 34 primer, which is designed for the 7.62 millimeter or any other large rifle primer being used in a semi-automatic rifle. The CCI number 34 primer is a mil spec primer. This is designed to reduce or eliminate slam fires in semi-automatic weapons that have a floating firing pin, such as the M1A, M1 Garand, or the AR-10 and these are highly recommended if not mandatory to use in any semi-automatic rifle. This is the CCI number 41 primer. This is also a mil spec primer for use in the 223. You want to use this also in the 30 carbine or anything that's semi-automatic and uses a floating firing pin. You don't want to slam fire because if you get a slam fire it's going to destroy the weapon and either severely injure or kill you. This is the CCI Benchrest Primer, the BR-2 large rifle. This particular box has APS strips, and I'll show you what those look like in a second here. What you see before you is the APS strips that come with the CCI primers. All the major ma manufacturers of primers offer the APS strips. These are for priming systems offered by RCBS and several other companies. The nice thing about these strips are they're reusable. So once you're through with a particular strip, hang on to it and if you end up getting primers and trays, you can always reload these strips. The primers you see here are Winchester number W209. These are shot shell primers and they come in what they call a battery cup. I'm going to take a close up so you can see what they what they look like. These are used for shot shells only. These are the uh, W209 primers. These are what is used in shot shells. There's no application for these in metallic cartridge. So if you buy these, make sure you're only going to use try to use them in shot shells because they will not seat in a center fired rifle or pistol. Depending on how you buy your primers, you can get them either in a brick of a thousand or in individual trays of 100. I like to buy them by the thousand. It's cheaper that way if you buy them in bulk. When it comes to storing your primers, you want to keep them in a cool, dry place. And I go the extra step of keeping them in Rubbermaid bins. This particular one has 37 boxes in there, so that's 37,000 primers I got sitting in here. And I got two of these fully loaded. Now, you want to keep them away from any heat source, just like you do with gunpowder, and you want to make sure you keep it away from your gunpowder as well. Don't try to save space by taking them out of the individual trays and storing them in a jar. They will sympathetically detonate if something happens. You're going to have a massive explosion, and that's the last thing you want in your shop. Now with primers, most manufacturers color code them. They color code them on the anvil. 
And the two that you see before you are federal primers. The one on the left is a standard large rifle primer, which is colored red. The one on the right is a large rifle magnum primer, which has a purple or lavender look to it. Once you get to know the manufacturers of your primers, you will understand the codes that they use. I don't have the time in this segment to get into every color code that they have, but understand that each and every individual primer company has their own way of doing things. Thanks for watching our introduction to primers. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment or a question here at our YouTube channel or come discuss it with some of the other members over at amosmith.com.